Stop putting everything in your name. Create a business, an LLC. Put everything in your LLC. Mm. And, okay. let, and open up a C Corp. If you don't know what it is, you need to figure these out. I'm telling you the names. Get a C Corp to run an LLC. If you want to make it even deeper, go get a trust fund and run a corp that runs the LLC. If you want to get even deeper, own two trust funds for your business and your person to run that trust that runs all the business. It can get deep, my God. Like, Absolutely. And Donald Trump actually showed me that method. That's how he didn't pay tax. So this is my business trust. And then I have another trust, which is my family trust here. And this family trust basically does everything, okay? Uh, the business trust is a member of my LLC where I'm a member. This is me, Brandon. I'm a 5% member in my LLC, whereas my business trust owns 95% of the LLC. So why do I set it up that way? Well, because in my business is profitable, right? <laughs> me, Brandon Clark, the person is responsible for 5% of the taxes that this business makes as an individual person, whereas the business is 95% uh, responsible for the, those taxes. So if we put numbers to it, if I had $100,000 of income that would be taxed, then I would be responsible for five grand and I would have to pay taxes on that, whereas the trust would have to pay taxes on 95,000. I'm responsible, right? And so my CPA is looking at this right now and say, man, why would you have a structure inside of a trust? Because trust pay higher taxes than everybody. Trust pay about 36, 37% taxes, right? And so that's where the strategy comes in because what you could do from this point is you could actually transfer or donate the full 95,000 to the beneficiary of this trust. Right, so there's three entities to a trust, right? You have the grantor or the creator. That's the person who creates the trust. Then you have your trustee. This is the person who has all the power. And then you have the beneficiary. So they have no power. So the grantor or the creator, if we're talking about an irrevocable trust, an irrevocable, there's a difference between an irrevocable trust and a revocable trust, or also known as a living trust. Um, the grantor is the person who has the power and it's giving away the power to the trustee. And so why would anybody do that? I don't even wanna go into all the details, but there's a, there's a lot of reasons. Plus this is a recorded. But anyway, to make a long story short, this 95,000, I would owe 36 to 37% of taxes on that amount. But because trusts are these special entities, they can do something that we as people can't do. They can do things that S corps can't do, C corps can't do, LLCs can't even do this. Trusts have the ability, the unique ability, to transfer or donate 100% of their gross profits, gross revenue. So I essentially could take this 95,000 and donate it to my family trust. Bam. So now I got 95 grand in my, in, my, in my family trust and we got our trustee and then we have the beneficiary. And I kind of skipped ahead of myself. The beneficiary of my business trust is the family trust. Guess who the trustee is here though? That's me, I'm the trustee. Guess who the trustee is here for the family trust? That's me. The beneficiary is my kids. And what do my kids need? A bunch of stuff. If y'all got kids, y'all know y'all kids need a bunch of stuff, right? <laughs> so now I get to pass that in for that entity, or not that entity, pass that income through uh, all of my entities without paying taxes. And I can basically spend that money on the beneficiaries, which are my kids. And so this is the, the protection piece here. And so the trust can, can own things like automobiles, it can own property, it can literally own anything that you want it to own. And so what I have is five insurance policies. I have a policy, Jennifer has a policy, Bryant has a policy, Bell has a policy, and then my other daughter, Janae, has a policy. And so this, this trust owns each policy, and I could actually use the money that I receive or income that I receive into the trust and I can use it to fund these policies. I'm going to open up insurance. I can actually fund all of them with the same money by using the strategy that I showed you earlier where you, you take out a loan. Put two, three million in my insurance and borrow from that and put it back in. Against your own cash. All right, so I can pay premium in one policy, take out a loan and fund another policy. And because I got all these over the same company, so I can do that. All right. And is there some questions in there? I saw like a question. I'm gonna answer like two more questions and then I gotta Head out. Yep. You don't pay any taxes. Hold on, wait. Is the money that's passed on from your life insurance policy subject to tax or not? What is the purpose of putting into the trust? Uh, so two purposes. Uh, the trust is protection. Um, and it, well, it's, yeah, it's really protection from the taxes and then protection from like lawsuits and stuff. Uh, anytime you guys start, uh, if you have like high risk businesses like trucking, like you own trucks 
um, things like that and you own a business, that kind of puts a target on your back for people to sue you. Um, and if you have an LLC and only an LLC, you could be in trouble. Why could you be in trouble? Well, let's think about it. What does LLC stand for? Limited what? Limited liability company or corporation, something like that. Uh, yeah, whatever, right? So let's say if uh, somebody wanted to come sue me, let's say if I if I like hit somebody in, in a terrible accident, they could sue me, the person, Brandon, but they couldn't sue my LLC or my company, right? Now on the flip side of that, let's say I own the truck or not I own the truck, the business owned the truck. And let's say the business hit somebody and killed a bunch of, killed a bunch of people. Well, naturally a lawsuit will follow the LLC. Let's say a judge decides to, after they levy all the assets that the business owns, they could actually uh, do what they call pierce the corporate veil, right? And they could come after my personal assets, which is why you don't want to have anything in your name for a protection standpoint. So essentially, let's say if somebody were to sue the LLC and they pierce the corporate veil, they'll see that I own it, but I don't own nothing in my name. And then they'll see this business trust. Now, because this business trust is an irrevocable trust, they can't pierce that, right? They can't pierce it, but it's like highly, highly unlikely, likely, and it costs a lot, a lot, a lot of money. And a good attorney, if they saw an irrevocable trust like that, would say, look, it's gonna cost a lot of money and ain't even no guarantee that this trust has any assets. So it's literally like, we got this trust, but we don't know if it has any assets, right? So that's why you have another trust behind it because all this money as it comes in or all these assets are gonna be layered. And so now I'm protecting myself here, here, or you will be protecting yourself there and there. And also life insurance policies are litigation proof in most states, most states. I mean, if you have money in an insurance contract like that, even if they do sue you, they can't get the money in the policy, right? So it's pretty cool, pretty unique way of, of being able to protect yourself, generational wealth, probate, taxes. That's really the main thing you wanna protect yourself from taxes. Uh, but yeah, I wanna appreciate y'all for coming through. Um, I'll be doing this again next Wednesday, same time, but make sure you turn on the notifications because I'm going to probably just be going live at random times whenever I get some free time. And uh, if you guys want to learn anything specific um, or know more about kind of like how I got started doing this, just feel free to like reach out to me.